Sup, sup, everyone. Welcome back to another video. And before we get any further, immediately, I want to stop you right now, right? You're free, as always, to pull whoever you want, have whatever opinion you want. But I think it's flat out wrong if you tell people that are asking this question genuinely, is Venti still worth it? And your answer is, yeah, he's just as worth it as other Archons. In fact, you would even somehow rank him above other currently available Archons. I don't think that is a fair and honest honest answer to be giving, especially to newer players. While canonically, Venti is definitely one of the most powerful beings in the entire world of Teyvat, currently, it's just not the same when you're playing him as a character. Now, in this video, I'm going to be outlining everything that you need to know regarding Venti and how he currently functions within the game state, as well as if there's still any value left in the character. Now, it's not all bad for Venti. I'm sure a lot of you guys who have been playing the game for a while can say that well you know he just doesn't feel that useful or he doesn't feel impactful enough to be justified as an archon in comparison to the others that we have currently venti is still one of the only if not the only character who can centralize mobs in a tightly compact area consistently which for a niche that is very very powerful almost too powerful which when something gets to the point of venti's effectiveness when doing his job it starts becoming a problem for game balance and here's why okay so if you allow venti to continuously group mobs while also ccing them i mean it's one thing to pull them into the space it's another thing to completely immobilize them in the process mobs can't fight back and if you have an entire chamber of 15 mobs all of them can get sucked into this one spot they can't move while you can also infuse additional elements which also allows for reactions to happen you start getting a little too much value for what one single character can provide for your team because essentially for all mobs that are cc'd by venti think of them as frozen because technically they are what can they do like they're already inside the vortex they're being sucked up they're like swirling around they can't really fight back technically they're frozen and they're also grouped right this these two factors combined makes it so it's incredibly difficult to have venti be effective in what he does without breaking the game which is why ever since kazuha's introduction you find that it's incredibly difficult to make use of venti in higher floors of the abyss i mean floor 11 you can still see great usage for venti in the first chamber however once you get past the first chamber uh you know even in floor 11 usually are filled with abyss lectors heralds or just straight up bosses where venti truly doesn't offer much as a god tier cc unit as really he's just a viridescent bot at that point and that is where i want to now touch on venti's biggest problems for people who are looking to pick up venti right if you've seen some of my older videos now you're just watching the updated one you might be thinking well has he gotten any better has the game state favored him more are any of his original team comps now resurfacing into the meta as much as i would want to say otherwise unfortunately that's going to be an astounding no no and no as the game continues to develop I can only foresee Venti falling further and further out of the meta. The main reason being that this character is just straight up broken. He either breaks the game or is pretty much useless. And if you say that you can play Venti effectively, meaning Venti is the best option in a scenario without him completely trivializing that scenario, I would argue that it's not really possible, right? Let's say you're fighting a Rune Guard. It's like, I can use Venti to fight a Rune Guard. But you see, is he the most effective tool you can use in that scenario no because you have kazuha if kazuha exists in the game fighting a rune guard kazuha will always be better than venti then we can turn the tables oh, okay well what about fighting hilichos well yeah sure venti of course is the best at fighting those type of units however then the combat process becomes so trivialized because you just throw his burst out and the fight's over right there is no challenge there's no really difficulty to any of it and hoyoverse till this day has yet to figure out a way to make venti exist in the current meta without completely trivializing it to the point where you press one button to end everything and because venti is offering utility and not damage it becomes impossible to ignore his presence 
without completely gutting the character. Hence why you end up in this situation where he's either broken or ineffective. And the biggest argument that I always hear for people advocating for Venti is that, well, he's still the best CC in the game. Yes, he is still the best CC in the game. But CC has not been the primary focus for Genshin for like over a year at this point. It's incredibly rare that I find myself or anybody will find themselves in a situation saying, well, if I had a little more CC, if I give them the good old suck, then I would have been able to clear that. Then I would have been able to 36 star that. It's very rare. If ever in the last year or so, people will ever have that problem. It's always, well, if I had a certain element to counter this gimmick, or if I had more raw damage to take care of those tanky mobs. Right now, you may be sitting here, let's say you're a newer player or somebody who has gathered quite a few characters and thinking, who else should I add to my roster to help me have have some fun or clear difficult content. Sometimes for people, both of these things can exist at the same time. Clearing difficult content could be perceived as fun. I would really want to advocate Venti to you, but he's just gonna take up a slot and really not do anything for the majority of Abyss 12 clears. Even in scenarios nowadays where there are a couple scattered mobs in those chambers, Venti isn't usually the go-to for the job either since Kazuha is so damn good at his job when it's just a couple of mobs scattered around let's say three or four Kazuha can do it just fine i mean even if it's like five to six mobs Kazuha can do fine it's really only when you got like 12 mobs scattered all across the room where a carefully placed venti ult can really change the entire combat landscape does venti start seeing value and hoyoverse has been incredibly stingy at placing those opportunities for us to capitalize on and i think going forward they're not going to do it that often Often, really and if you have a well built up sucrose in many scenarios she can cc decently well now again the argument here for you guys is that he's the best right like venti is the best think about it like this i'm going to give you guys an example and hope this makes sense when you're the best football player in a basketball game suddenly your best really doesn't matter now does it because that doesn't directly translate into what you need right now in the moment for the most part in genshin impact what you need is an all-purposeful support a character that can deal amazing damage either through reactions or have great innate scaling or a dedicated buffer multi-purposeful characters which does more than one thing in a team for example why bennett is so good is he's an attack buffer and he also heals same with raiden shogun she deals massive damage he's an on-field carry and she batteries the team Koko Mi is an amazing healer and also a hydro applicator and with how important the hydro element is that itself gives great value. So you see, comparatively, Venti also gives energy to the team. But with the conditions set in the way they are, you would think Raiden Shogun just needs to come on field and slap a couple mobs around to do the same thing. So overall, you tell me, what is Venti's true purpose in the game currently? What does he excel at that is purposeful and meaningful that other characters doesn't already fill? Because unfortunately, I don't see a reason to play this character very much outside side of the fact that I want to live that nostalgic feeling of utilizing the first ever five star unit released and after all this said the final nail in the coffin for venti is that his constellations aren't even that good yeah if you can get him to c6 that's a sizable damage boost for your team but overall it just pales in comparison to modern day character constellations and if hoyoverse really cared about this character they would go back and revamp his constellations and also some other older characters but for the most part there just isn't enough value even in his constellations to justify older players to come back and pulling for those so unfortunately venti now is kind of stuck in this purgatory of never ending torment waiting on the sidelines to be useful to the meta again and who knows maybe in the future hoyovers will let venti back into the meta but from how it seems that is incredibly unlikely he's still used in lower floors and i know newer players can definitely benefit from him but once you actually hit the biggest challenge in the game you'll quickly start to see that venti offers 
little to assist you to getting over that hurdle. All right. So I hope this has helped you out a little bit. Comment down below if you're pulling for Venti and whether or not you still think he is of incredible value. Because in my eyes, I think he is currently the weakest Archon and he'll definitely be maintaining that spot even after the Dendro Archon releases. So that is it for today. Thank you guys for watching. And until next time, I urge you all to stay safe and peace, peace. Bye.